Thank you to my friends over at Torn Sage Studios. You can find them on YouTube. Great bumper music, great anything music. Uh, a good friend of mine, John, over there writes a lot of good material. Check them out, Torn Sage, on YouTube. Today is the 4th of June, 2023. Welcome aboard, you guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Like and subscribe. Feed me info, anything that's going on in your community that you want to discuss more, and we should be discussing more. We're going to touch on a few things in the next few minutes, which we should be discussing more. Uh, there's always something to discuss um, when it comes to our cities, whether it's our suburbs, our trash, traffic. You know, how good are we doing? Right? Sometimes the good do really good and the bad never can get good. So it's, you know, talk about those things. So like and subscribe to the channel. Today was the Firefighters Road Race. Um, they believe the Worcester Firefighters Road Race started probably in 2020, 21, shortly after we lost six courageous firemen to the Worcester Cold Storage uh, Warehouse Fire, which was terrible and um, six firefighters succumbed to that. Since then, we've lost nine firefighters uh, in the city of Worcester since 1999, 2023. And nine, if you do the math, that's a lot of, that's a, that's a big loss. And there, a lot of them are lost because, you know, um, Worcester is an old city, you know, and firefighters have to go into these old industrial buildings put their asses on the line, and um, sometimes they don't make it home to their family. So today, I was fortunate to uh, run slash hybrid walk in that, that race. I had a great time. Our friends from Genesis Club were there. We're one of the major beneficiaries of that road race of the four. And uh, so there's a great celebration at the beginning, mentioning all the, the firefighters who have passed whom I just mentioned, uh, made mention of, um, or re referred to the nine, but in name they are called out and a balloon is set into the sky for each uh, of the fallen uh, heroes, uh, which are the Worcester Fire people. So thank you, you guys. And uh, speaking of fires, um, you know, up here in Spencer, I'm in Charlton, probably five, six miles up the road, the first congressional, uh, congregational church in uh, Spencer, the big white church, as they call it, uh, was hit by a lightning bolt, I believe, last week. And I could hear it because I could hear all the first responders from um, less than a mile from them, uh, actually 500 feet sometimes from the mass pike. But um, I don't know how many alarms it was, but on the news that the, uh, the, the church in, right in downtown Spencer was hit by a lightning bolt in the steeple and it just came down. Um, that's 280 years that church has been at that location. Now, they had a fire back in the 1850s or 60s, I think, but they chose to rebuild it. They are choosing not to rebuild this, this particular building. Um, the town of Leicester has welcomed uh, those participants, those uh, congregationalists, churchgoers that, uh, you know, that was their home at Spencer. Lester welcomed them with open arms. So um, thank you for that. Very sad day. Um, I could hear that and I knew something was big um, going, going down um, with uh, that kind of weather going on last week. And, um, you know, you got the downpours and we're just in a crazy weather pattern right now. It's in the 50s and should I wear thermals, a sweater or shorts? Well, depends. Depends on how much weight you're carrying around too, which I'm not carrying around too much. So I consider this pretty like uh, April, April weather. So, um, you know, last week I was reading too that in, you know, here's Main Street in Worcester, you know, trying to uh, recover. Um, and, you know, when you go downtown, you've got the Canal District, you've got Polar Park, oh, that's happening, that's happening. It's still, though, not, you know, Worcester's kind of like a newly forming planet. You know, it's like going to go through its ice ages, and it's going to go through its meteor storms and until it finds its Goldilocks zone, you know. 
And uh, a lot of people are moving here because they think it is a Goldilocks zone, but economically, man, there's so much stuff to figure out with Worcester, you know? I mean, so here's a restaurant, and the name of the restaurant is uh, Shaken Crab, and they have locations even in China, Las Vegas, okay? They're trying to, I believe it's at 554 Main Street. Um, they acquired, and I remember reading this, they re acquired their, their liquor permit eight months ago. But the landlord, who is the uh, Minkenti, Men, M E N K I T I, okay? <laughs> Menkitty, Menkitty Group, which owned a lot of prop property downtown. Um, you know, the new, uh, the, 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 the landlord, which the, the group is the landlord, and the restaurant, Err, they, they, it's all about a ventilation system, okay? And they know, like, with the ventilation system, you've heard this with restaurants over the past. You know, when Davis complain, oh, so all I can do is smell Burger King, you know, in my, you go to the Burger King in Auburn, they have all these tall pine trees surrounding <laughs> the, the restaurant. I believe that was probably because the neighbors said, I don't want, I like burgers, but I don't want to smell them all day long either, you know. Additionally, that's seafood. Seafood's boiled seafood. I guess the, uh, you know, the Shaken Crab specializes in, you know, that boiled seafood. And it's fish, crustaceans, the ocean, low tide, we know it can taste good, but not sometimes smell so good. Um, so the um, Menkindi, Men, Menkindi group, um, and I'm probably bit butchering that name, but they, they're not gonna sue me. They have more money than I can give them. Um, but the Menkindi group, um, they wanna build a vertical, uh, this old building. Now these are old buildings on Main Street, and I get they're trying to repurpose it on the the commerce building is going to turn into housing, and I get it. But, you know, where is the city on this? I mean, let's let's go. This this is an international chain that wants to not relocate in the, at the Mercantile Center. They don't want to put up an establishment in the Blackstone Canal District, okay, or Polar Park District. Um, they want to put this restaurant on Main Street, which there's a lot of good complimentary restaurants down on Main Street. There really are, you know, but the warm and fuzzies are on where the baseball bats are and, and uh, 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 you know, uh, are swinging, you know, and I get that. I mean, so again, it's the, it's the, uh, Worcester is becoming a, you know, newly forming a planet. It needs to find its identity and, you know, spin, spin, spin. You're going to hit, have some meteorite showers and you're going to have some Earthquakes and ice age and whatever and I believe me. I'm, I, I'm not joking I mean, it's what development is all about growth is hard I mean, I met with some of the city councilors last week at an event and you know the Worcester city was just not prepared You know to go up to 206,000 people old infrastructure all the automobiles You know, um, so we're like really way behind and, and as we grow right the automobile storage, how many garages do we have to build until we find some comprehensive uh, plan to, uh, you know, incorporate vehicles along with pedestrians. I mean, it's, it's getting crazy, you know, it really is getting crazy out there, but you would figure that the city would want to work with this restaurant. The, re the restaurant's in danger of losing its liquor license. You can only have that so long before you're not using it, right? So I'm not using my liquor license, so... Um, they can give it to another restaurant, okay? The, the licensing board can do that, you know? So Shake and Crab, the, uh, the ownership group, uh, McKitty, they, they're vertical, you know? And the restaurant owner says, no, it needs to go up. The ventilation shaft needs to go up, like most ventilation shafts do. So where's the freaking compromise here? And so it makes mass live. Right? 554 Main Street, you know? And I remember saying, you know, it does not look like, it does not look like this restaurant's going to um, uh, 
they'll probably opt out after investing thousands of dollars, you know. And uh, they also like have restaurants and um, let me let me just give you uh, Shake and Crab now has five locations in Massachusetts. A lot of them in the Metro West area, uh, plus more in neighboring states, or China, the Midwest, and Las Vegas. You know, so Worcester, what are you doing? You know, if I'm the, that ownership group or that 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 uh, proprietor that wants to open up something funky downtown, funky meaning, uh, you know, out of the norm, but that's the way the country's going. You know, with the hots, the salsa, the chipotle, and shake and crab at the boiler. You know, I'm, I'm all done with that. I, I try it out, but we're we're not uh, like, typical Worcester. We're not being cooperative. So, you know, who on the city council could jump in there? Who represents that district? And mend this flipping fence, because if you have that propriety, you're gone. Um, so that's the downtown. So last week I was listening to asthma, asthma, as a major, major health concern. Now people associate different um, ailments to a different de age demographic. You know, um, you know, particularly like asthma and heart problems and. Children can get these things, man. You know, so last week on the news, asthma. Asthma. Now, this is according to the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. And I looked into this because it's no different, man, than anything else going on. And around 3,600 people a year die from asthma. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> Allergy triggers where you live. So it's, here we go with your zip code. There we go. Black, Hispanic, and indigenous populations bear a disproportionate burden of air pollution, asthma, allergies, and climate change. Now, back in the day, during the Industrial Re Revolution here in Worcester, you had your east side and your west side. So, most of the factories were built where uh, the rich people would not have to smell them. You know, which was based on the current of the air. It's the Gulf Stream, right? So you went to the east side, the, the west side, and people were living on the west side because it was obviously a little breath of fresh air as opposed to the east side where all your in industry took place. Um, you know, and this is the result of long history of discrimination around housing and environmental policies in the U.S. that have pushed people of color and indigenous people, minority groups, undesirables, if you will, um, into undesirable neighborhoods with greater environmental and social risks as a result, systemic racism and pol uh, policy, systemic racism policy in America, um, racial and ethnic minority population are more vulnerable to health impacts of and, and climate change. So there's more of a climate change in here, but the bottom line is it's what I previously stated. You live in a poor neighborhood. You have uh, uh, below the uh, you're in the, the the poverty line. You know your 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 health care is lousy. Your food choices are lousy. And by the way, asthma. That's not the only thing. You're probably dealing with asthma, obesity, uh, a lack of good nutrition. Um, because I drive through our cities and I said, you know, you have, there's two things going on in, in cities right now, the haves and the haves not. And that's just the way it is, you know. Um, if you can afford to live on the west side, you can afford, and you're gonna think your city's beautiful and your city councils are pulling for you, but when you get into the main south district where it's, you know, all section eight housing, federal housing, and uh, yeah, you do have, you in, in Worcester, you have city. We have a great diverse city council, but you know, um, how are those folks ever going to get out of those situations? They're like, you know, condemned to eating, uh, you know, canned high salted uh, sodium foods and uh, living paycheck to paycheck, probably on a, on a, on a government benefit, which is not a paycheck. Um, you know, and then we just had this crazy thing called a debt ceiling, you know. Uh, last week and um, you know I don't mind the federal government you know you know going back and forth trying to find out what the right thing is to do 
but I'm just wondering how that affects, you know, the day to day. The day to day of everybody that has to live in this country. Make a living, right? So, it's a good day for our firefighters, but remember, cities are tough, suburbs are tough. We still have a lot of people out here, by the way, a couple of women that are missing, and uh, we have not found them yet. Um, and they are from the Brookfield, one is anyway. And uh, so, we can find problems anywhere, but let's focus on things, all right? Kenny Pierre, signing out. Talk to you in a few. Take care. Bye-bye.